Hey, what's happening, everybody? It is Thursday night. Time for another episode of Selling. Oh, whoop, wrong show. Ha ha, it's Thrifty Business. <laughs> I don't think I've ever done that. That's the first time. So, hey, what's going on? Hey, it's a special Thursday night because not only do we have a great guest, we have a surprise co-host. So why don't we pop the surprise co-host in here right now and let's add her to the mix. Hi, Hello, Nadine. Hey. What the hell is going on? Hi. What is happening, everybody? Nadine's back. Yay. What's oh, happening? Good to be here. Yes, I'm I'm very excited. Are you very excited? I am very excited, yes. <laughs> My mom's in the chat. She said, Oh no, I'm not ready for a show tonight. Yeah, sorry. I've never said that for I've oh my God, that's so funny. I've screwed up mom and I show by saying 30 business, but I've never said <laughs> and it's funny because you're trying to give Lola and I pointers for us, you know, for our show. And, yeah, and, you're the one. <laughs> and, and then I dropped the wrong show title. That is so funny. That's funny. You're on yeah. vacation mode. All right. So let's get right to the, uh, the show, shall we? Time for Jay's Tiki Talker each week. I drink a different rum out of a different mug and I'd match it up to our guest and our oh. guest tonight. Oh, let me do it this way. Is hey Lola? I meant to ask you, how do you pronounce your last name? It's Aviano Fryer. And yeah, I, I never would have got there. So. And before I got married, it was even longer. So, oh my God! So it's actually <laughs> shorter now. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So our guest tonight is Lola. Lola's uh, a good friend of Nay and mine, and uh, Nay and Lola live near each other, and they quite often do thrifty things together. So, real quick, I want to show a picture um, of Lola from about a month ago. Because it's going to matter when I show you the mug. It's Lola and her wife. All right. So here we go. I Okay, look at Lola's hair. And then look at my mug. <laughs> <laughs> perfect. That's pretty close. Perfect. That's amazing. And also, that's like the color it was when I first got it done. Right. It's almost like hair texture, too. Yeah. That is so cool. And it, yeah, and that's the thing too. It was the color and the texture. I'm like, this is crazy. That and is awesome. it's from Three Dots and a Dash, which is in Chicago. And we are talking about big city thrifting tonight. And Chicago is a big city. And I have some thrifting stories. So uh, let me sip the rum. Um, and then let me sh hang on, hang oh, on there. Sorry, sorry okay. Uh, and because Lola lives in Philly right now, the birthplace of the Declaration of Independence, Colonial Rum. Nice. Oh. Cool. See, ta da. All right, what do you got, Nay? So. I have a very famous tiki mug tonight. Um, this was actually featured on a, an episode of Thrift Hunters. And I bought it from <laughs> way back when he was on Thrift Hunters. It's a Jekyll and Hyde New York City mug. So also big city themed. And um, I have iced Kona Hawaiian coffee in my mug. Get out. <laughs> yeah. So. And are you, what are you drinking tonight, Lola? Um, I also have coffee, and this mug is from Woolen, which is another place I've lived um, in Warsaw. So that's sort of not intentional, but I guess it goes with the <laughs> There you go. Everywhere. All right, come back, relax, enjoy the show, and uh, make sure you're not picking your nose in about uh, 25 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get, oops, or I'll put you on the big screen. I'm going to turn you off. There we go. <laughs> let's get right to it. And hey, check that out. We got, oh, hey, what happened here? We got some new graphics, thanks to Nadine. Yeehaw! Time for our scores of the week. These are the things that you should be on the lookout for or a bolo. Okay, so my first one sold on Poshmark. This is an Henri Bendel uh, purse. Now, this the store was very popular. They were in business for like 75 years. Just went out of business, I guess, about a year ago. So um, it's it's a, it's still very sought after, very high end, and I found this at Goodwill, not even behind the counter at Goodwill for fourteen ninety nine. I grabbed it so fast; it was in like new condition, and I could tell it was authentic. I took it up to the counter, and they were like, "Ooh, this was supposed to be in, the, in behind the counter. Why was this?" Ooh. So, but they still let me have it for fourteen ninety nine, and I took a best offer of three hundred and thirty one dollars on Poshmark. And my buyer was very pleased. Nice. All right, real quick, since more than one person in the chat asked, they want to see your nails. Oh, okay. There you go. <laughs> All right, there's Nay's nails. <laughs> All right, what's your next uh, score? 
Okay, so these I sold on Depop, which is another, um, that's a, a newer platform that I'm selling on. A very funky kind of like Gen X, uh, you know, stuff like that. So I actually, this is a score because I bought these for $5 and they were pretty trashed. Uh, so, but I knew because I know that I can clean up shoes that they would come out looking like new. So what I did was I put them, I threw them, took the laces out, threw them in, a, in the wash in a mesh bag um, with OxyClean. They came out brand spanking new looking and um, I sold them for $50. Very nice. Yeah. So, and this is a brand MM La Flair. Um, now that is a stock photo because it was a new tags item and it's a plus size item, which is, it was hard to show on, you know, um, they're, they're, the pants are, are harder to show. So um, I took a best offer for a hundred dollars on these. This is like one of those um, subscription companies. They do staple uh, kind of basic office wear, but it's high end and it's it's almost like a stitch fix subscription. Uh, but if you ever see this brand MM La Flair, grab it. So I sold these. yeah, so I sold that. And then just this morning, um, I sold on Poshmark also of uh, these Gucci men's uh, leather Oxfords. I took a best offer for $180 and I paid $5 for these at a consignment store sale. Get out. Uh, $5. Yep. That is, were they that shiny or did you shine them up? I, sh I shined them. They okay. put that in the bottoms. If you look at the bottoms, photo of the bottoms, the bottoms have um, significant wear and I disclosed oh them. Yep. But they still sold for $180. So uh, someone yeah. will probably need to resold them, but they still got a, a bargain for. And then this is a sale. I just wanted to point out that Poshmark bundles are amazing because Poshmark has a deal with the post office that for six ninety seven you can sh uh, ship as long as it's no greater than five pounds you can ship um, any any item for that. So people so it encourages people to buy multiple items. Uh, so I get bundles often. So I sold to the same buyer these Lane Bryant jeans that I found in the bin. So ninety nine cents a pound for $35 and the Cole Han purse, which uh, I paid $7.99 for at Goodwill. I, I sold that for $57 and the buyer, um, you know, had the $6.97 shipping for all of that. Very nice. Mm -hmm. And you can see what my earnings are. Posh does takes 20%. So. All right. So I sent this out today. This is something I want you to write down. Go get a pen right now. Get a crayon, get a piece of toilet paper, whatever. Uh, I've never talked about this before, but there were a series of records put out by Nautilus called Super Discs, and they claim to have a higher uh, quality sound than regular records. So they would take classic records, for instance, Police Ghost in the Machine, and press it on their specially duper duper vinyl, uh, and they all do quite well. And I listed this, and it sold within about eight hours. So wow. um, uh, keep your eyes open for Nautilus Super Discs. And I realize this is a little out of focus. I'll have to talk to my uh, teenage photo assistant. But I, I picked this up for 18 bucks at my favorite store, Buffalo Exchange. <laughs> and uh, I got a lot of low offers. And I, I counted on every single one of them because someone makes you an offer, they're at least opening a conversation with you. Uh, but I never got a good offer till finally someone snagged it yesterday for the full, well, not the full head on sale, but fifty two forty nine. dollars Nice. And hey, you know, it's 108 degrees here in Las Vegas in August, but someone somewhere needed these 1978 Christmas ornaments that I listed before Christmas last year. So these were listed in like October or November of last year. I was kind of surprised and bummed they didn't sell last year, but boom, they're off and running now. And I paid uh, two bucks for these. Awesome. And this was a rare one. So you're not, you know, this isn't really Ooh. a polo unless you happen to know a rock star. I happen to have a friend who knows a rock star, and the rock star is Tommy Hendrickson. Uh, you might not know him, but he's the guitar player in Hollywood Vampires. He's the guitar player for Alice Cooper, who's also in Hollywood Vampires. And so he is a known guitar player. This dude is so small. How small is he? His pants were marked XS. Wow, that's a tiny guy. And so I had the jacket, the pants, and the shirt all separate. And none of the, uh, the jacket was pretty good quality. I mean, nothing was bad quality, but they weren't really expensive items. But he signed 
a card for each individual item and threw in a guitar pick. And someone said, I would like to buy the whole outfit together. How much? I said, how does three and a quarter sound? They said, awesome. And then so I bought it. I mean, I sold it. So I re really quickly ended all three listings, put all three together with all three pieces. Boom, three and a quarter. It's off and running. And he's got some more stage clothes that he wants to uh, have me sell for him. Awesome. All right, but not everything can be winners. Now it's time for our duds of the week. Do not let our mistakes be yours. Okay, so I did some retail arbitrage with the Vineyard Vines for Target when, the, when it first came out. And I actually did well with the swimsuits, but... This was one of the things that tanked and it was, I wanted to get some of the, uh, the new category in Poshmark is home goods. So I wanted to get some listings and home goods up. However, I couldn't sell this. And I finally, I took an offer of 20. And the thing, the reason that it's a dud is because I got, I did get it on clearance, but I think I paid 15 for it. So Ooh, I really made, yeah. you know, yeah. So that Bummer. was a dud. And then this is a dud because I sold it on Depop. I, uh, I took an offer for, what is it? 16? Um, but I forgot to check. I forgot. I checked the wrong shipping. There's in Depop. You can use your own shipping. You can use Depop shipping. I chose Depop shipping, but I accidentally checked the box that says that I would be paying for the shipping and I didn't, uh, take yeah. yeah, so I didn't take that what? into account when I, so I, you know, I had to eat the shipping on that and I paid $5 for it. So again, I really didn't make much of a profit because of my mistake. All right, I only got this because it was in a collection and I bought the whole collection, but uh, you know, NASCAR just does not do well. And this was a brand new hat, had never been worn, still had the cardboard thing inside of it. And it didn't sell for $14.99, it actually sold for $12.99. I only paid 50 cents for it. So yes, I made a profit, but I just don't mess around with NASCAR stuff because it just does mm -hmm. not sell. And this guy was like, come on, man, let's do 10. And I'm like, all right, look, it's only been up for a month or so. So I held my ground at $12.99 and he finally bought. And then this, I had this since last Christmas. Here's a brand new, still on the little hangy thing, <laughs> uh, Raphael, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle mask. And no one has ever even made a nibble on it. And I got cosplay, I got Halloween costume. It's from Nickelodeon. Mm -hmm. I got great keywords, so hey, if you need a Raphael mask, I will happily. Oh, you know what? It could be the shipping. I just realized that that will that will go first class, and some some assistant put thirteen dollars priority on this little. Oh, you haven't mask. actually sold this yet. No, it's still for sale. So yeah. tell you what, I will I will drop that shipping to free, and I'll happily take twelve dollars if you want it. So go get it, everybody. Oops. Oops. All right. Now let's talk about, yeah, CD and cassette scores of the week. And man, I had an amazing week with CDs and cassettes. But first, mm -hmm. Nadine. Yeah, so I got these. These are actually, I think they're still in the store at Target. But there's a particular Goodwill that has a ton of Target salvage. They get a ton of Target items. for, And these were in the CD section, brand new. And I got four of them and I sold them all. I had it set to auto that I wouldn't take less than um, 15. So I accepted all. So the first, the, one, the highest one was $21.99. They bought it at full price without even making an offer. I sold another for 19. Then I sold two for 15. So easy listing, multiple variation. I paid, I think, $2 a piece for them. So nice. yeah, so that was a great sale. Oops. Uh, well, Ang uh, Angelique said, put Comic-Con on the listing. Yeah, maybe I could do that. And William said, how much longer do we have until all Xmas inventory should be listed? You're about a month late already. So get on it. Get on it. I say year round. All right. So I teased in the group that I spent uh, $34 on the next five things I'm going to share with you. And let's see what they sold for. First off, we have the soundtrack to a kick-ass hip-hop movie in the 80s called Crush Groove. I paid um, I paid $12.99 for this. Sold it for $60 wow. on eBay. Uh, I paid... Seven bucks for this at the local record store. Sold it for $30 on Amazon. This is a special, the specific version 
of Return of the Jedi. Not every Return of the Jedi will get you 30 bucks. Here's my big one. Boom. $5 at Savers. I sold for $150. Whoa. The Tom Jones box set. $5 at Savers. Is that, that was the long box? The yeah. Well, yeah, it's a long one. But they had it for $7.99. I had a, it was 25% off. So $5, $150 on Amazon. And here's a soundtrack to a great movie called Action Jackson. Uh, sold this cassette. I paid 70 cents for the cassette. Sold it for $20. Nice. $20. Bucks. And last but not least, I paid $9.99 for this Henry Mancini CD and sold it for $85. Wow. So that $34 turned into 300 no, $39 turned into $346. Amazing. Now, if you have not started to do flipping cassettes yet or flipping CDs, what are you waiting for? I just turned $39 into $346 of used CDs and cassettes. And you're all like, whoa, Tom Jones? <laughs> yes, that would pay for some tiki mugs. Absolutely. <laughs> but I haven't given any away in a while. So let's give one uh, CD webinar away and one cassette webinar. And the winners of these next two questions, they can choose what they want. And here's all I ask of you. If you've already paid for the webinar, don't participate because you've seen it already. And if you're in the secret beach, you can watch it anytime you want. So also, please don't participate. But hey, let's do a giveaway. Ready? Here we go. So the first person I see reply with the right answer will be my winner. All right, here we go. Which artist played the MTV VMAs the other night but didn't play at the venue where the VMAs were held? Uh, I, I let Nadine see this before we went on the air, and she said, what are the VMAs? No, I, I, I did figure that out, but I didn't know they were. <laughs> I, did, I did know that. that. I got to say, over the last five, six, ten years, the VMAs, I feel old, but this year, majority of the performances were really, really good, and I thoroughly enjoyed them. So, I don't know if I'm getting young again. Boom. All right. The winner. Matt is our winner. Yes, it was the Joe Bros who started inside of the Stone Pony, then walked out to the beach, and they had fireworks. That's why they weren't playing inside, because they had a whole fireworks show. All right, Matt. If you would just message me on Facebook and choose, you want the flipping CDs webinar or the flipping cassettes webinar? All right. The, the stern ponies in my neck of the woods. Yeah. The yeah. next question is, who has the biggest selling live, the key word here is live, album of all time? And again, if you if you are in the secret beach, don't participate. If you've already taken the webinars. Don't participate, please. Let someone win who has not taken the webinars yet. So who has the biggest selling album, live album of all time? Okay. Uh, not Aerosmith, not The Stones, not Springsteen, not Elvis, not Michael Jackson, not Kiss. And although everyone thinks it's Peter Frampton, it is not Peter Frampton either. So we've had a lot of great guesses, but no one has got this mm -hmm. one right yet. Not Elton John. Does Elton John have a good live album? I don't, I don't know if he does. Nope. Beatles don't have a live album. Boom. There's our winner. Garth Brooks. Wow. Double Live has sold 10 million copies as the biggest selling live album of all time. I don't know who CMP1357 is, but if you would message me on Facebook, I'll be more than happy to give you either the Flipping Cassettes webinar or the Flipping CDs webinar for free. The rest of you, if you've not taken them yet, head over to jasonthrifts.com and you can take the flipping CDs webinar, the flipping cassettes. I got a tiki webinar. I've got the 36 mistakes you must avoid if you're thrifting and flipping on eBay. Whole ton of webinars to help you with your business. And I, I just looked at my numbers, Nate. I did a thousand dollars in the CD sales on Amazon the last 30 days. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah. One thousand dollars. So you can buy a webinar that can teach you how to do a thousand dollars in a month. You should do that. So oh, it's you are the CD whisperer. Yes, I sure am. All right, now let's get back to it. Where in the world did our stuff go? If you are not shipping internationally, you are leaving leaving out seven point three billion potential customers. And I love the new graphic; it's awesome. Thank you. All right, where'd yours go? 
So mine, this is, and this is actually, it's a, it's, the brand is Custo Barcelona. I sold this on eBay for $29.99, uh, but the buyer paid shipping to France and it went to Bayreuth, France, which is right near the Spain border. Now, the funny thing is Custo Barcelona is a Spanish brand. So it actually almost went back home. So. And what's the city? Uh, Bayreuth. Yeah. It's right See, near the that's the whole fun of the segment. You yeah. have to pronounce the city it's going to. And I speak French, but I, I speak French with a horrible American accent. So, All right. So mine, oh, real quick. If you watched last week, this was mine last week. And if you remember the customer, I had said the customer was very excited that I had it to offer because he has a hard time finding tiki music in England and he got it already. So I, mm -hmm. I shipped it like six days ago or seven days ago. He got it already. And this is what he wrote to me. I honestly cannot believe how quickly the CD arrived, bearing in mind that it was a bank holiday this weekend. I've been hunting for the CD for months and have paid for it a couple of times only to be refunded for some reason. I have friends in Des Moines and Lexington, Virginia, and have visited your great country several times, mainly for the Breeders' Cup. Thank you for your great service and friendly communication. I'm sorry I haven't got the Tiki language mastered yet, but I'm catching up fast. So if, look, I made this dude's day. Only because I offer international shipping, you should too. It's so it, it's so fulfilling when you make a customer's day like that. But that's not this week's. This week's is Rick Wakeman from the band Yes, and it went to H H Husqvarna, Sweden. So he needed some Rick Wakeman on vinyl in his life, and it's off to Sweden. And the great thing is, I've already today and last night I have got more CD sales, a forty, a thirty-five. Another great international record going out. So I've already got my segments uh, for next show. So the CDs, cassettes, and records, they never stop selling. All right. Time for our thrifty tip of the week. Woo, another new graphic. Woohoo! Okay, so my thrifty tip is to not be afraid to check out the store mannequins. Uh, even if they're in a window. Um, you know, look at their tags. I wouldn't, I don't, I don't undress them because I think that's a little rude. So what I usually do is I ask the employees and they're like, oh yeah, fine, take whatever. So I recently found a almost new condition Vineyard Vines women's sweater on a mannequin and it was under a jacket. So you couldn't even see it. So if I hadn't, you know, pulled off the jacket and looked, I wouldn't have known. So definitely check out the, the display mannequins, uh, when you're yep. I, I'm, I'm about to do a webinar about the Buffalo Exchange in the Seeker Beach. Mm -hmm. And I'm, uh, because I'm tall, I, I was up looking at the mannequins on the shelf. I'm like, I need that. Can I just yeah. take it down for you? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah no problem. To, and ask the employees. All right. So here is, I've done this tip before, but it came to fruition so well yesterday. I had to give it again because we always have new people in the group and watching. If you're not in my group, the thrifting board, join it. It's free. It's awesome. There's almost 56,000 thrifters who love to help each other when you're in a store and you come to a dead end when you're looking up something. I looked up Betsy Johnson purse taxi and I only checked on eBay and there were none actives and none solds. And I, whoa, whoa, whoa. I've got the times in there. So you can see at the top, I posted at 1.13 PM. At 1.14 PM, Victoria Hughes already had my answer. Nope. That's about the going rate. Here they are on Depop. Here they are on Posh. Yep. And everybody did that. So if you can easily find something, don't waste don't waste your time putting the thrifting board. But when you don't find it, boom, drop in the thrifting board. You should have your answer rather quickly. There's a second tip in there too, to check multiple platforms for sold. Yeah, well, I, I needed a tip for the show today. I'm like, let's see how good. Yeah. I even said to Stacey, I said, let's see how good the thrifting board does. Man. You guys That's came awesome. through in spades. It was awesome. Very cool. But there was so a tip is, within the tip too. This is the group you're looking for. So if you see me at the top with some surfing boards, join us. It's free. Uh, whoops. Hmm. Uh, hmm. Okay. I, I thought I had my things in order. I guess I don't. <laughs> you have got to be shipping me little tips and tricks, what to do and what not to do when it comes to shipping. Okay, so my tip is I recently moved to a, a pretty large municipality that has a recycling center, a municipal site recycling center where you can bring your cardboard. Well, I've learned that 
Sunday nights it's, is the fullest because on Mondays they empty the cardboard bins. And so on Sundays, if I go to the municipal center, to the recycling center, I can find all the shipping boxes that I need for the week. So um, if you have a local recycling center that has the cardboard drop off, definitely find out, find out when they empty it, when it's, when it's the fullest and go find your boxes, free boxes. I love free boxes. All right, let me, let me get this address label off. I don't need to have everyone see the, the two and the from. Okay, so so we talked about Frankenboxing quite a bit in the thrifting board. Frankenboxing is when you take uh, one box or two boxes or three boxes and put it together with another box or two boxes or three boxes. And uh, my buddy, uh, my buddy Leo did this a little bit different than I ever have, and I kind of liked it. So he used the cube, which I like, which is eight by eight by eight. But he needed it to be a little bit taller. So he folded over the top to make it a little bit taller because that's the natural natural mm -hmm. fold line. And then he took another one and made oh. a top that fits over top. And I've never done it quite like that. And I kind of like it. Genius. Yeah. So I'm actually going to use this for the next time I need just a little bit taller of that. Mm -hmm. But I can't. And it, man, it looks really nice. That's thinking outside the box. Yeah. Oh, ho, ho, ho. <laughs> so good job leo thank you for sending me the tiki glass that uh came in that box very cool all right so there we go i just had my things a little bit out of order all right we used to call this the ebay selling tip but it was i always it bugged me because we have uh we have so many platforms we sell and it should be just generic so it's the online selling tips Because we all sell on a whole variety of places. So it can be any platform. So my tip is a Poshmark tip. And I have these Gucci loafers. They're a size seven and a half women's. They're, they're chunky 90s Gucci loafers. So in order to sell, if I, want, if I have a high ticket item or anything I want to sell, what I will do is go find similar items that have sold in the same size. And then I will go see who liked those items. And I will Ooh. follow the likers. And, um, you know, usually they'll, a lot of times they'll follow back. If they have items that they're selling, I'll do some shares so that they go into my closet. And they'll see those Gucci loafers that got sold that they had liked in their size. And uh, hopefully they'll buy mine. And it has worked a couple of times with some of the items. So. And I forgot all my fun stuff tonight. So let me throw up my CD spin and just pretend we're back on the CD segment for a second. Okay. <laughs> Pretend this is a dud. Okay, there we go. Cool. All right. So perfect time to switch it to the just online selling tip because this book was listed on Amazon for three years. Wow. Three years. I then moved it to eBay where it was listed for six hours before it sold. So when you got stuff that's just sitting around on a platform mm -hmm. and not selling, it doesn't mean it's automatically not good or a dud. Just try a different platform. Absolutely. Three years. Three years. And I always kept it at the cheapest price. So if someone went to Amazon for this book, I'd always be the best one. No one ever bought, obviously. Six hours on eBay, sold for the asking price. Didn't even make an offer. That's so, a good tip. Yeah. So make sure to move your older stuff around. So we got a question about Poshmark while I get ready for our next segment. Can you find out what the items sold for on Poshmark? Yes, uh, the, the the sold price will be if you go to if you search the sold listings, you have to uncheck my size, you have to uncheck available, and then if you search the sold listings, the price that comes up will be the best offer or sold price. Beautiful. All right, now it's time for Jeans with Joy's Good Job Award of the Week. Joy is our resident jean expert. She uh, helps every single person that comes into the thrifting board with their jeans. And man, this week's is amaze balls because Maxine found some big E Levi's that are really, really special. And mm, the, nice. we're, lo we're looking at like $1,500 to $2,000 for these jeans. Oh my goodness. And there's a bonus thrifty tip in here. She found them on the just out rack. So the employee pushed the rack out at Goodwill. I always tell you, run to that rack as soon as it comes yeah. out. Boom. Picked it off the rack. $8.99. Gonna be 
at least fifteen hundred dollars. Wow. Yeah, that's some amazeball. So good job, Maxine, and good job, Joy, on helping her with all the little. Because when you get to these rare jeans, it's about the intricacies. Like you got to look for this rivet and this tab and this stuff. And so when you sell it, you need to know all the the buzzwords because that gets you the best money. That's all right. Funny. So a uh, little bit of uh, housekeeping, and then we'll get Lola in here and talk about big city thrifting. No show next week because Stacy and I are on vacation in a, in Hawaii. And you know, look at that. It, I, I forgot to match the graphic. Awesome. Yeah, it does. My goodness. Oh, wait. I got a little flower. How, too. Is, how did that happen? That's amazing. It is our 25th anniversary next week. And so we'll be celebrating anniversary. Hawaiian style. Thank you very much. I am excited. Vacation starts soon. And even better, well, I shouldn't say even better because I might have a mad wife at home. Uh, the thrifting board turned four this week. Yeah. Now you would think, why haven't we had a big celebration? I didn't want to do it going into this vacation because I'm going to be out of pocket for a little while. So uh, no show next week because, of course, I'll be on vacation. But the following week, I'm having the admin team slash the lifeguard team for the most part, most of them, uh, we're going to do a group show. So we are four year old. Yay. It's amazing. I remember the the conception of the group. It's amazing, Matt. <laughs> yeah, not better, Stacey said. But close. <laughs> but close. <laughs> so um, so make sure, uh, set, your, uh, set your calendar, set your alarms for two weeks from today. We're going to have the happy fourth birthday thrift and board uh, show. And we're going to be having some giveaways. We're going to be having some good prizes. So I'm going to line up some of the sponsors that I work with. We'll get some good prizes and we'll have some fun. So yeah, it's been four years. We're at almost 56,000 members. So I want to thank all of you all for part being part of the group, being part of the journey. And uh, you guys all make it an amazing Facebook group. Yes, it's the best there is. And the next event coming up is Ecom Chicago 2019, October 16th through 18th in, a, in of all places. Hey, Chicago. Uh, right now, if you go sign up, Tiki 20 off gets you $20 off. It's an amazing three-day event. And the, the, we just got the schedule for the first day. The first day is a coach's corner. So myself, Chris Green, John Lawson, Stephanie Inge, tons of others. They will sit down in 20 minute segments. And so you can go from coach to coach to coach as part of the part of the event. It is so amazing. I'm gonna do all eight hours of coaching. I slacked only did five hours last year. And this year I'm gonna do all eight. Uh, it's an amazing event. We have a great time in Chicago. It's a lot smaller than eBay Open. So a lot more individual time with all the speakers, all the coaches. It's an awesome, awesome event. So come on out and join us. That's All right. Fun. Boom. Here we are. Let me get Lola back in here. Hey, Lo oh, wait. Hey, Lola. I almost forgot my last sound effect. Uh, there it is. <phone rings> hey, everybody. It's Lola. Hey, by the way, I want to point out something, Nadine. Mystery has a T in it. <laughs> Whoops. That's right. I'm the <laughs> well, bonus misery co host. I am the misery co host. Yes. I didn't realize that. Good catch. You never that to me before. It's like, Long before it was posted, and I didn't notice it. Oh, so. Yeah, well, I will fix that for um, so that you have the. the yeah, Stacy said, "What's up with the misery co-host?" I'm, I'm a like, misery co-host. I'm misery. <laughs> hey, uh, real quick, I do want to uh, before we get to Lola, uh, where to go? There was a question they had about your shipping tip. And I'm just seeing it now. Mm -hmm. burr, 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 burr. All right, I'll just ask it. It was from Heather. It said, do they let you dig through those boxes? Oh, yeah, they don't care. They're happy right. to get rid of them because they have to empty the whole thing out the next day anyway. So, yeah, cool. they absolutely do. Hey, Lola, how are you? I'm great. How are you guys? Uh, we're good. All right. So we're here to talk about big city thrifting because here's what I hear quite often. Stacy and I, we try, we love big cities. We, we love uh, remote islands and we love big cities. We're, we're weird like that. Um, and so we love Chicago. We love Boston. We love New York City. We're in LA all the time because we live near it. Uh, and people often say there is no good thrifting in the big cities. And I say hogwash. What do you say? Hogwash. Um, I guess it depends on what you're looking for. I definitely get like 
people who say, oh, you're not going to find really good hard goods. I've, I mean, I do find good hard goods, but like smaller items. And I am mostly focused on clothing. So when you're looking for high-end clothing, there's no better place than in a big city because that's where the fashionistas live. And that's where people don't have a ton of room in their closet. So every season they're going to donate their old stuff and get a new wardrobe because they can afford to do that. Um, so and you, what you're saying is where I grew up on the east side of Cleveland <laughs> country, there's no fashionistas is what you're saying. Um, well, I mean, I think you can speak to that better than I can. <laughs> I am the fashionista of where I grew up. So, <laughs> um, but I mean, but you, it depends on the city too. Like I find way different stuff in New York than I do in Philly. Um, I mean, I think people are pretty fashionable here, but not to the same level. And I remember the same thing um, back when I lived in LA many, many years ago. I found so much designer stuff I'd never seen before. I found all kinds of like promo stuff for Hollywood that you just, you're not going to find that kind of stuff in other cities. Um, so every city has its own strengths and flair, yeah. and you're going to find that in the thrift stores. All right. So uh, what big cities have you lived in? Because your list is quite extensive. Um, yeah, it's pretty long. <laughs> okay. So I grew up outside of Boston. I lived in LA for a little bit. Um, I went to school in Dallas for a couple of years. And then I lived in New York for a while. I moved abroad after college. So I lived in Warsaw and then in London. Um, and I lived for a tiny, like a summer in Pittsburgh, um, which I actually did a ton of thrifting that summer. So um, I remember that fondly. And I might be forgetting somewhere. You moved back. You kind of part time oh, moved back to New York yeah. recently. What? You part time moved back to New York recently. I did part time. Yeah. So in the last couple of years. Yeah. I was commuting between Philly and New York for like a year. Um, so I was living in both um, sort of simultaneously and thrifting in both. Um, and then the other place I go really often is Louisville because my wife's family's from there. So we're there like two or three times a year between like weddings and Christmas. And stuff. I don't know if I call Louisville big city. <laughs> <laughs> Not compared to like the Northeast, but it has its own like, it has its own like flavor. And but, but you pretty much have like a checklist of who's who of big cities where you live. It's that's pretty, that's a pretty amazing checklist. And, you know, uh, I, I've lived in a couple and I, I visit a lot and, but I grew up way deep in the country. Like, like we were so country when we got a McDonald's, finally, we all stood in line for it. That's how country we were. All right. So it was not big city living. Like when you wait an hour and a half to get into McDonald's, that's the biggest thing that happened in the town in like 20 years. Like, well, that's country living. So not everyone lives in the big city that's watching right now, but a lot of us end up in them for work or for vacation or at least nearby. Maybe you'll stop in. I, I love the big cities. I, I really do. Mm -hmm. uh, I, Stacy and I turn into a different person when we end up in New York. Like all suddenly dinner's at midnight every night. I'm like, what are we doing? Like, it's like midnight. I'm like we should probably eat at some point, you know? Well, that's the New Yorker way. Like, it, <laughs> it totally is. And then they, they lived in Philly. She's in Jersey now, but she's closer to New York city now. Right. Yeah, I'm closer to New York City, but I have the best of both worlds here because Ooh, I, have, yeah. I have I have Philly and New York City, and uh, I'm a easy like you know half hour to forty minute train ride to New York, and I'm an hour drive to Philly. So, and I love Philly for Philly, but one of the best things about it is also it's so easy to get all over the north uh, northeast from here. So like we can be in Baltimore and a few yeah. hours in DC, and so I do try to take advantage of that too. And it's always fun just to like get away for a weekend and. Yep. And yeah, if you train, go all over. Yeah. So Angela, one of the admins in the, in the thrifting board, she's so remote. <laughs> the nearest town doesn't have a stoplight. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So um, when you're uh, in the big cities, besides the designer uh, clothing, what else are you finding that you don't normally see in the suburbs? Well, I think. Well, some of it's sort of regional. So like in Louisville, um, a big thing that's always in the thrift stores are derby glasses, which, hmm. you know, every year for the Kentucky Derby, there's a special like commemorative glass. And you don't see, I've never seen one anywhere else. But when you go into the thrift stores in Louisville, there's like a million of them. And not all of them are worth money, but the older ones are. So it's always fun to look through. Um, I always like finding sort of, 
local, uh, and well, I guess a good example is like based in your tiki mugs, like you can find the local tiki mugs. So things like that where it's uh, something that's like a local favorite place. And yeah, you know, I know people are missing teams it. too. Teams too. Like. Yeah, sports teams. Mm -hmm. um, I found an amazing ugly Christmas sweater for the 76ers that um, nice. my wife claimed, so it did not get sold, but her comps were like 75 bucks and, you know, stuff like that. Like, you're going to find a lot more like Philly sports stuff in Philly than you are anywhere else. Um, and like same yeah. with Boston, New York, like everyone, every, all of those big cities have like teams that people love and that like a lot of the unique uh, like bobblehead stuff like that, it can go for a lot of money, um, but will be a dime a dozen at the thrift store. So, yeah. so uh, how long have you been married? Almost five years. Okay, so you're 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 just newly one still. Uh, <laughs> your wife loves sports so much, though she's not even watching us right now. Not as I know, it's like Chris is not watching us. Chris, Chris what are you Chris doing? already is watching the Eagles preseason game and the uh, women's World Cup team exhibition game that are both happening in Philly. Okay, right so now. wait, so wait, so wait, so wait. They're so watching an exhibition game and preseason football, which is just effing worthless. No, okay, well. Instead I, of I the Brown, my Browns are on right now, which are they're going to win the Super Bowl. They're on right now. I don't give two shits because it's preseason. I will care in two weeks. That's when I'll care. But what I wanted to say was, your wife has a, a different career than you, right? Yeah. yeah. Does yeah. she does she like the thrift? Um, not so much. No. Okay. <laughs> We've been trying to work on Chris. Like, for now, now, now like, my... There's a running joke with Chris, too, that because um, yeah. Lola's always trying to find clothes that Chris will like. And so we have a a, a, um, a running joke about the Chris rejects because I'm always like, so did Chris like that? And Lola's like, no, another Chris reject. I'm going to sell it. So. And then I sell it for 50 bucks. So it'll <laughs> So Stacy, my wife, was the same way. Didn't love thrifting, but I, I broke her down over the last 25 years. <laughs> She's pretty good at it now. But do you use your wife's knowledge of sports to help you determine, like, do you say to her, is this good? Oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, and it's not just always that, like, I'll go ask Chris for advice, but I'll pick stuff up or, like, I'll know a player because I'm listening to, yeah, you know, sports radio because it's on in the car <laughs> or stuff like that. So, yeah, it always helps to learn stuff. Um, the other thing that we've worked on together is puzzles. So Crystal loves to do puzzles, which is like not really my thing, but there are some that are really expensive. So take it home. Crystal do the puzzle, make sure there are no missing pieces. I'll list it on eBay. And yeah, yeah we've had some good, some high ticket puzzles that yeah. you know, I, Chris has enjoyed doing them. So, and then when I have a puzzle too, that it's in my inventory that I'm not selling or I just don't feel like listing, I'll be like, I have a Chris puzzle for you. <laughs> Yeah. So what's the, what's the best puzzle you guys have sold in the near in the, in the recent I past? I need to, I don't remember the name of the uh, company, but it, it was wooden. Like, it was wooden, right? Yeah, like um, literally made with a jigsaw, and all the pieces were like some of them look like monkeys. There was one that was um, oh on theme tonight because we'll talk about elephants more later. Mm -hmm. There was like five pieces came together to form an elephant, and then the elephant fit into the puzzle. Um, so it was just like a work of art. It was really beautiful. So what would you, you sell that for? One twenty, I think. One twenty. Yeah. Wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. That that gets that gets. Oops, Carlton. <laughs> so if you could put your face right between his legs, there we go. <laughs> That's too weird. Oh my gosh. How about this? Is that better? That's better. <laughs> I, actually, hang on a second. I'm taking you out. Oops. Nope. Taking you out, and then I'm adding oh. you back. Now Lolo's up top. There we go. Oh, I, I always mean to do that. I, I want to get the guest up top. Yeah, that's better. one of the things that StreamYard's gonna do, and they haven't done it yet. I would like the oops, <laughs> that's not what I meant to do. I would like the guest to be big, but they only have it set up so the host mm. is always the big one. And we've said, hey, it's typically about the guest, not about yeah. The host. That would be awesome to have the two hosts on the, on the yeah. Team. Yeah. So this way I can put you up top. So when I put the the dancing guy, it doesn't cover you. I was let's gonna look, peek under his. <laughs> let's clean the screen a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, uh, let, let's go back up a little bit, Lola. When when did you start thrifting? Have you thrifted all your life? Did you like going to garage sales when you were a kid? Were you a yeah. nerd like me? I definitely went to a lot of garage sales with my mom. 
Um, and she's not so much into thrifting, but I got the bug of like, you know, antiques and old things and just like unique stuff, um, not at all like turned off by the fact it's secondhand. Um, and so I started going to thrift stores in high school, um, especially because I hated buying what was in the mall. I didn't want to look like everybody else. And so I started buying vintage and I started dabbling on eBay, selling some vintage clothing on eBay. Um, yeah, <laughs> for a freaking puzzle. I mean, if you see like this puzzle, it's, it is literally a work of art. It's like, it takes puzzles to the next level, but I had no idea that existed until I was looking for puzzles because yep. I'd like to do puzzles. So I was with you when you bought that one too. Yeah, sure. I'm probably with you when you buy everything, but <laughs> yeah. um, it was also right before Christmas. So I think that helped because it was like a perfect Christmas gift. Um, and it was that time of year people are spending more money. But um, yeah, so I, that's kind of why I've also thrifted all over the place because I everywhere I go, it's just part of like how I enjoy traveling. Um, it's thrifting. Yeah, the one thing I wanted to show um, is, well, I'll tell a story and then I'm gonna show something. So one time I was in New York City back when Thrift Hunters was on, I think that's when it was, and I was doing some uh, promotions and Nay came up and took the train and we spent the day thrifting and stuff. And when I went, we, I was getting ready to leave to go to the airport mm -hmm. and I stopped in a Goodwill that someone had just dropped off 82 Pink Floyd, Grateful Dead and Woodstock new with tags t-shirts. And I, I try to get a better discount, but they're like, nope. I'm like, come on, I'm buying them all. They're like, nope. You they had like a hundred t-shirts up on the. <laughs> yeah, there, there were four bucks each. I, like, I, need help. I was scooping up the t-shirts. Yeah, <laughs> but I bought, when you do that and you're not planning on it, I had to buy a suitcase. They had one suitcase missing a leg or a wheel. So it always fell, fell over and they still charged me $8.99. I'm like, come on, it falls over. What are we doing? But that's big city thrift and some store went out of business, closed out. Some distributor had some leftovers and they're like, ah, here, Goodwill. And so I have never found 82 new tags, kick-ass shirts like that before. But I, I can't remember what city I was in, but I, I bought more than I planned. And so this was a Goodwill uh, $6.99 uh, suitcase purchase. <laughs> oh yeah, because it goes with us to every city now. We fly Southwest, so two bags fly free. We check this with all our shoes on the way out. And then the way back, it's usually filled with breakables and CDs. This gets filled with CDs every trip and comes back full of CDs. So the big city thrifting, is, it, it is there. It is awesome. You can make a ton of money and you can pay for your trip or at least a good yeah. portion of it. That's a good point too, Jason. We find, I know in Philly, New York, um, when Lola and I are thrifting, and we often find a lot of either um, store salvage or, um, you know, you can tell that a store has just donated a whole bunch of um, mm -hmm. a whole bunch of stuff, you know. One of my favorite things to find in New York is, yeah. We, I always do both, but yes, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, because, yeah that's, I mean, when, once you've gone to the local sites, like you've seen it once, you're done. I, I've actually never been in the Statue of Liberty, but that's fine. I've been to like every what? New York City. Oh well, because when I first moved there, I was like, I'm too cool for the... I was we take a day trip one day? Um, what? We need to take a day trip? We'll do a day trip someday. I just want to go there. So we'll go to the Liberty and then go to the Goodwill outlet. Oh, yeah, of course. <laughs> um, but one of my favorite things to find in New York is uh, a lot of the high-end vintage stores will eventually just, like, if stuff doesn't sell and they donate it. Um, or people will buy it and never wear it. But I, I find stuff, vintage clothing with the tags still on from a high-end vintage store all the time. Um, and the funny thing, yeah. I also like, I list a lot of vintage on eBay um, that it doesn't go for as much as it does in these stores because the stores have like a high-end boutique kind of reputation. Um, I will sell to a lot of vintage stores in New York and I'm, ha I'm fine with it. Cause I bought it for four bucks. If they bought it for 20, 30, 40 bucks. They sell it for hundred bucks. That's fine with me. You know, we're all happy, but it's really funny. Yeah, when turning I it over. Yeah. And I bring it back to Philly and then I sell it. And lo and behold, the address is like an address I recognize. Cause that's definitely a vintage store I've been to in Brooklyn. You're, you're putting money in your wallet. <laughs> oh yeah. Um, All right, so Angela's got a great question for you, Lola, and I didn't, we didn't cover it where to go. There it is. 
how long you been selling? Like, uh, when did you start on selling online? So, like I mentioned, I started selling a little bit in high school, um, but not at all full time. I mean, it was like very much a hobby. It was more just I was going to the thrift store and I couldn't bear to leave some stuff behind. And so I'd sell it and make enough money to go back to the thrift store and just you know, <laughs> like not, you know, I, and I was terrible at it. I did not know how to do comps. I did not have great photos, but I was having a blast. Um, and then I was um, in grad school. Um, that's why I first moved to Philly was for grad school. And I took a semester off. So I had a lot of uh, free time. And I also did not have income because my income was from my grad program. Um, and so I was doing a lot of thrifting. And then it finally kind of put two and two together. I could probably flip some of this stuff. And I was looking for you know, groups on Facebook and I found the thrifting board. And then I started um, intensively selling on eBay and then Poshmark. And, and then you took my class and we were like, yeah, that's what you met. yeah, that was how the story of how we met. We should talk yeah. about that. We met through, through the, thank, thanks, Jason, for another wonderful you're, friendship. You're welcome. Because uh, Lola and I would never have uh, met, met Eva and we're like best friends now. Even though we live in the same city and we're probably. Yeah, yeah. We, so she, uh, she took my thrifting class in Philly, but she doesn't drive. So she said, uh, would you mind giving me a ride? And I was like, no. The second she got in the car, it was like we were just like old souls. Like we had known each other for. for I forgot a, you don't drive. I forgot I that little drive. tidbit. I do not have a driver's license. I do not have a car. I do not know how to get behind the wheel of a Big car. City girl. But luckily you were surfing on the thrifting board and <laughs> boom, you met Nadine. See? Okay. That's how you, that's how you use the fun little graphics. <laughs> um uh Lisa says, like when I go to the UK, I take my biggest suitcase, but only pack the bottom third. I fill the rest of the case of bubble wrap so I can mm -hmm. fill with breakables. So yeah. we uh Stacy and I, we have one of the big duffel bags from LL Bean. They are so durable. But you can pack that up tight, throw it in your big suitcase. And then as you wear your clothes on vacation, we throw the dirties in the duffel. And then in the actual suitcase, we pack the stuff we thrifted. Breakables and CDs go into the carry-ons. It's a whole methodology, but we're going to have a blast on vacation. And yet, we're going to do some thrifting and pay for it. So that's all yep. in part important. And we always have thrifty, close encounters with the thrifty. Oh, yeah. so we have a special one tonight. Let's talk about that. Oh, my speaker just turned off, and that's sad because I just looked at it. So let's try that again, shall we? <laughs> Close encounters of the thrifty kind, kind, kind. So Nay and Lola have one. I had a very tiny one, but since we're doing it, I thought I'd throw it in. I coined a term a long time ago. When you're in the thrift store and you look in someone else's cart and go, damn, I should have got here earlier. That's called cart envy. And so I got this great bamboo rum rack to Ooh. add to the collection at Goodwill the other day. And a lady walked by. She looked down in my cart, looked at me, and she goes, all the good stuff is, is in other people's carts. And she was all depressed. I'm like, that's cart envy. She goes, yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, should have been here five minutes earlier, lady. Yeah. All right, you guys actually have a graphic with yours. We do, yeah, we have. Here. So ours is... Uh... Oops. Elephant, oh. yes. So why do we have an elephant up here, Lola? <laughs> um, so Lola and I were thrifting in a, a large, um, a large, a large store in Philly. And Lola was in the clothing section, like doing her own thing. And I was looking at the jewelry. And all of a sudden, like, Lola, I mean, she was like all the way in the other corner of the store. I was in one corner. So she comes up to me. We turn around at the same moment. And do you want to take it? Lola? Sure. Um, and I think I had a dress, right? And you had a piece of jewelry. I had a necklace, yes. And we both um, were like really excited to show each other what we had found. And it wasn't even because either of them were things we were going to buy that were like worth reselling. We just thought they were cute. And I think we, thought they were. we were like, oh, look how cute this is before I put it back. Mm -hmm. And then we both had elephants on them. And we like ran across, we were without knowing it, like ran, running across the store at the same time to show each other at the same time. Yeah. like the same thing that we had found on opposite sides of the store. Um, so I think like my dress had an elephant print and then you had a necklace. A necklace with an elephant on it. Yes, it was yeah. very, very crazy. And it's almost like we joke about that all the time that when we're thrifting together that we have like like thrifting ES, thrifters ESP or like we, we have like, we share a thrifting brain or something because, um, and that was just like the icing on the cake. That was, yeah, yeah that was amazing. 
when uh, when Stacy and I first met Doug Horn, Doug Horn is a famous artist in the Tiki community. We're we're longtime friends now. He's the one who designed our home logo, the Dennis Inn. But when we first met him, he was at a um, art uh, festival in Tucson, and Stacy and I were looking through his art, and we had our backs to each other flipping through the art and we picked up the same piece of art at the same time and turned around and said, how about this? Since we were holding the same thing, of course we had to buy that. All right. Speaking of goods, let's talk scores and duds, Lola. Okay. Well, this is a dud. Did you want to do scores first? Now, you know, I used to do scores first and then we end on a dud. That's sad. Let's go duds first. Then we end with scores. Okay. Okay. Um, so this was a dress. I was super excited when I found it. Um, so I guess one big city thrifting tip I have is to always find out like the smaller non chain stores because they get a lot of local donations that people are like really loyal to them to the cause, especially if it's like a local charity. So I found this at um, one of my local thrift stores, and it is um, BCBB Max Azria, but it's their like runway, so it's their really high end um, like, dress level. I've had it for like two years. I can't sell it. And you were talking before about trying it on different platforms. I've tried it on eBay and Poshmark and Tradesy and- Have you tried Amazon yet? <laughs> I've not tried Amazon yet. Think, I, mean, I know it's the runway, but I know BCBG, Max Azria has kind of tanked in itself. The, the regular, oh, is so it, I would think the runway would do better, but do you think it's just because of the association with the brand that it's just- yeah. you know, is the fact there's no space between BCBG and it? No, problem? that's how it is. That's how it is, yeah. yeah. Have you tried it with the space between BCBG? Um, I don't. Because yeah. you, you got to also remember the customers who are searching. Right. So if, if they type BCBG only, this right. won't come up. I have the yeah. specifics on it. So it should come up if you're, I think, I think eBay would know the difference, but maybe not. I a, a, a pair, apparently, it is not to yeah, build. I, just... I thought it was like kind of like funky, cool. Like... I think it's cute. Um, so I might send the thread up and see if they take yeah, it. Yeah, there you oh, go. Real, real quick, quick, I do want to answer Jean's question. As as much as I would love to deduct my Hawaii trip when we thrift, it doesn't quite work that way because the whole trip isn't for thrifting. But I will deduct the thrifting expenses, obviously. Deduct gas to get to the thrift store. So. Yeah. Cool. So this is a dud inside a score, I guess. <laughs> or a bolo. Um, Madewell jeans always do really well for me. Either the jeans or the jean shorts or the overalls, they do amazingly well. So I picked these up because I thought that, oh, you know, this kind of style seems to be coming back in. You know, I mean, they sold and they sold for 14 bucks and then Poshmark takes their cut, but at least I didn't have to pay shipping. So learned my lesson, um, sticking to Madewell jeans only. But if you do find Madewell jeans, they're always a good pickup as long as they're in a decent condition. At least they take less when you sell something for under $15, they only take two ninety seven, I think it is, instead of their 20%. So mm -hmm. but still. Yeah. All right. So I get this one from yeah. you and I'm like, $8 is a score. Yeah, so that I knew you were going to see that. There's a story <laughs> this. Okay, so um, one thing I love to do is I always look for like crafting supplies at the bins because I do a ton of different like needle crafts and like fiber art. Um, so this was something I found inside a huge bag of yarn and embroidery stuff um, that I was going to keep for myself. Um, and then I found that there's a bunch of tatting supplies and I don't tat and I thought about teaching myself how and I was like, no, I, I have limits like to my patients. Even me. Um, so I lauded it up and I had no idea what it was worth. Um, so I, I put it on an auction, which I almost never do. And it sold for eight bucks, which was, I mean, I was happy with that because it probably weighed, I think it weighed three ounces when I shipped it. So <laughs> bins, it's a dollar a pound. So that's, you know, what, like 20 cents. Um, and I was a little annoyed because the person who bought it didn't pay um, for a couple of days. And I was like, it's eight bucks. Like, and so finally I got the sweetest message from her. And she said, I am a truck driver and I've been on the road and I don't have a PayPal account. For some reason, she went to a Walmart to buy a PayPal gift card in order to pay, which she asked me, I think I probably could have helped her figure out an easier way to do it. But so she went out of her way 
and like made a special stop just to pay for this and then sent me the nicest message, left, left me the sweetest feedback. And so this was a score because I was feeling like a little kind of frustrated and overwhelmed. And when I knew that this like small item had gone to someone who really, really wanted yeah, it. That's a different kind of score. It's true. Exactly. It was just like, that was the push I needed to like keep listing. And it made me yep. just, yeah. Yeah. Right, I, wish, I wish I had this ready. Let me, let me no, find it. Need someone to say. Exactly. Yeah. Um, well. And I mean, when people are slow to pay, it's not always that they're a bad buyer. Sometimes, yeah, sometimes there's really, you know. Good job. I was looking for the applause. I'm like, good job. Okay. <laughs> Didn't sound like applause, but okay. Um, this is one of my favorite scores because I wore it a bunch and then I flipped it. Oh, you sold that. Yeah, I did. Um, it was a shirt in my rotation and then I was like, oh, I think I'm done with it. So, um, J. Crew is not a brand I would usually pick up. Um, I know for some people it's a great brand in their area, but Big City Thrifting, um, we're lucky enough that it's actually kind of like what, yeah. we're, what we find. But this, I knew the print had to be something, so I looked it up, and um, it's a special club um, that still has a really good following. You can't get it, obviously, anymore in stores. Um, so I listed it um, within a couple days. Sold it for fifty bucks after I paid like four dollars and wore it a bunch of times. <laughs> That's the yeah. best. Yeah, yeah. Was, I didn't even realize that you had sold that because I've seen you wear that a bunch of times. Yeah, I thought I told you I had sold it. Yeah, but I know yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, that was a great shirt. Move on, I have so much clothes. Um, yeah, it is dress free, absolutely. Yeah, and, you can have a constantly rotating closet. Mm -hmm, that's one thing I love about clothes. Um, and so speaking of which, I actually didn't end up wearing this, but um, this was something I bought thinking I might keep it. And it's a super in style, uh, trendy item because it's leopard print. Mm -hmm. um, and, it, yep. mm -hmm. and so not everything that I sell at Vintage goes for a ton of money, but I was super happy for what I paid for it to get you know, $40. It's so quickly, the buyer paid shipping. Um, and this is, um, I thought it was a good thing to share because it goes into our topic for our show tomorrow May, which is yes. trends to look out for. And it's just a good reminder that all the old fashion trends come back. Yeah, they everything kind of cycles back in. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and this is another, you know, bolo brand for me. I love to find DL 1961. Um, every time I find it, it goes for, you know, at least 40, $45. That's what I had expected to get through these for some reason. Someone on Poshmark just bought them outright for my full listing price. So, you know, I think sometimes we get frustrated with the race to the bottom and think that we're always going to just have to take like a low ball offer to sell stuff. But sometimes it works out in favor because I, you know, added a buffer to the listing price. I did not expect to get 60 bucks. And I have 60 bucks. Someone was probably looking for that particular style. They were dedicated and they didn't care. Mm -hmm. They just wanted that. And in that specific watch, I think, because they were, you know, I, I checked what was available on Poshmark before I listed it, and there were a bunch in that style, but it may have been the color that really sold them. So that's a good thing to remember. Mm -hmm. So wait, Lola, you said you and they have a show. Tell oh, us yes. about that. Oh, yeah. So, um, so if you go to the previous one that I sent you. Yes. So tomorrow at 11 a.m. Eastern and 8 p.m. Pacific time. 8 a.m. I'm sorry, 8 a.m. Yes. <laughs> we will be doing <laughs> our third video. So we, we've we started, you want to take it, we've started um, our own YouTube channel called no Lalo's Thrift Talk. And we're right now we're doing a video a week. We are doing them live and we're trying to get a following. We have a small following. We've started out a little rocky with some of our tech issues and whatnot, but we're definitely going to, going to, you know, Take the bull by the horns and you got it now. Yeah, so um, we'll, we'll give you some confetti too. Thank you. Well so, done. So yeah, definitely follow us on YouTube. Uh, our channel is Nalo's Thrift Talk. She's and low. what's that? You're Nay. I'm Low. So yeah, so you know, like Nay <laughs> Low. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I, we both love um, thrifting and selling clothing. So I think that's a lot of what we'll be talking about in general. But we do also sell hard goods and we sell across multiple platforms. So we really want to talk about the like multi platform cross listing kind of process and what we've learned from listing different things on different 
platforms and stuff like that. And so. how thrifting has benefited our personal lives. You know, we're just kind of, kind of, in, that'll be all kind of woven in there too. And uh, so we'll have a different topic every week. We will eventually have some guests. We're going to do some hauls and things like that. Uh, we have some other things in the works uh, for the future, but we're just starting out with with our channel. We're, right now, our goal is to do one video a week. So, what uh, guests? How huh, you say? Uh, do, oh, we have a uh, Lola. Just put. Uh, did you put the, the the link for that in the chat too, Lola? Yeah, I sent it um, in Streamyard. Okay, so oh, no, I got it. I got it. Okay. I got it. So here's uh, tomorrow morning. If you're up and you're working, especially if you're shipping or listing, there is the link in the chat and uh, join them. So you're saying you're have guests. I, I haven't been invited yet. Hmm. Maybe we need a first guest, Lola. All right. I don't know. Maybe we should talk about this later. I don't have to be your first guest, but congratulations yeah. on getting it off the ground and getting it going. Thank you. Yeah, it's been in the works for a long time. We've been talking about this for a very long time uh, because we have so much knowledge of fashion and, you know, city thrifting and we're so on the same page with with our knowledge and um, you know our our thrifting intuition and all that we just are full of tips and you know we just work so well together so this has been in the works for a long time but we finally just we were like you know what we don't just put a video up we're never going to do it so we just started doing uh, videos and uh, so now we're you know we're gonna do one every week and you know we'll we'll improve with time our first few our first couple were a little rocky we had some tech issues and whatnot but we're um we're really excited to kick yeah off. yeah robert and joe i think they understood my my hand <laughs> <laughs> um so this is where you can find us um yeah so we're um we're also both on instagram um we're gonna be sharing some thrifting tips um Pretty, we're going to try and do like, you know, daily thrifting tips, thrifting challenges on Instagram. Um, and then we both share, we both sell on Poshmark and Depop and eBay. Um, I'm sort of revamping my store, so it's not up there. But what is your, you are found in, what is, what is your store right now? Found in Phila, P-H-I-L-A. Um, so here it is right here. All yeah. my stuff, well, it's actually not all my stuff, but most of my stuff is found in Philadelphia. And that used to be my blog too, which I haven't. Uh, been keeping up, but may come back. All right, so let's end on uh, what is your best big city thrifting tip? So you're in the big city, you're hitting a thrifting store. What's your best tip when you're hitting a big city? I think um, being picky is really great, and um, the city kind of makes you be a little pickier. So, um, like I said earlier, I don't drive. I walk everywhere. I take public transit. Um, I do. I, I love to bring like a longchamp bag or something like one of them, a bag that kind of folds up, so I can carry anything I buy. And then I know a lot of like where the post offices are in New York. So sometimes if I'm there. Um, <laughs> I don't want to carry stuff back on the train because that's a lot of weight. So I'll just put it and I, you know, calculate that into the um, cost of goods. So if it's not amazing, don't get it. And, um, you know, some people really thrive on volume and I definitely do that sometimes. Like me and I go to the bins, um, which is, you know, like 20 minutes outside Philly. So it's pretty close for us. Um, but if I'm going to say a New York City for store or Boston where I know I'm I'm, you know, shipping it back or coming back on the train um, quite a distance. I am looking for items that are going to, you know, 50, 60, $70 kind of range. And putting yeah. The, dollars. Yeah. yeah. I, I definitely think, Lola, that thrifting in the city makes us not thrifting snobs, but but we're so much pickier. Like we, yeah. we put back things that other people would be like, oh, this is us, you know, because there's just so much of it. There's so much good stuff. There's so much high end stuff that we can be pickier. We're really, really lucky that we live in the thrifting Mecca that we do. We, yeah, we are so lucky. And I, I do uh -huh. try to be cognizant of that because I don't want to, you know, like look down on people who are picking up the stuff that, you know, like J crew that we pass over because you can make a great, you know, living reselling those bread and butter brands but yeah. i love um really finding the gems and especially vintage clothing um there you know there's some unique city op opportunities to source mm -hmm. vintage clothing that i take advantage of and yep. just you know not not settling for um 
whatever you can find, like really digging and finding those gems. Yeah, when you're in the suburbs and you've driven up in your SUV, yeah, you can be like, oh, just, I'll keep loading stuff up. But when you're on foot yeah, in the big city, you definitely got to be a little bit pickier and look for that higher return. And I think that's a great tip to end on is look for the higher return when you're in the city. Because even when I'm in the city, I'm traveling. So the suitcases only do have only so much room. Yeah. You got to make sure you're bringing home the good stuff. And the prices, especially like if you're comparing a Goodwill, like Goodwill in New York even compared to Goodwill in Philly, it's so much more expensive. So that's a good reason to be really picky because you're, you know, you're putting more, more investment into each other. Yeah, you are often. But the other thing is too, sometimes like those high end boutique kind of consignment shops will, you know, where they, where they price everything that's really not so mm -hmm. good for resale. Um, they have great sales too. So we have, we have that advantage too. It's a very good tip. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. Oh, and, and there's boxes. If you need, if you live in the big city, there's boxes everywhere mm -hmm. when i walk the streets in new york on garbage oh, yeah. day there are boxes yeah you don't even have to hold any stock you just go on garbage day like i need Great. that yep. size i need that size i need that yep. size when i was living I'm, I'm terrible every day on uh, like every week on garbage day i'll just go outside and like my next door neighbors will have put out amazon boxes and i just grab them and funny it's good for the environment they don't care um, thank you, Greta, for Greta, or I'm not sure how to pronounce her name. Thank you for that lovely comment. That was really sweet. And uh, it's great to be on, and uh, I, I appreciate your, your kind thoughts. Thank you. Did Jay drop out? Maybe. Huh? How about that? I left my own you show. You I'm dropped out. I didn't say goodbye. I'm just like, I'm out of here. See you guys later. Bye. Yeah. I, I bumped the... <laughs> The, uh -huh. the back button, and I was just like, what? You're like, bye, I'm done. You're, I'm going to Hawaii. <laughs> I'm already on vacation. I left before the show was even done. That was crazy. I've never done that before. Oh my gosh. But, but speaking of Hawaii, let's let's end on that. We'll do a little, we'll do a little dance. Oops, that blocks Lola. <laughs> so thank you everyone for tuning in. Lola, thank you for being on. Uh, like we said, or, well, I had this already and then I screwed up because I bumped a button. Shaboom, shawow. If you're working tomorrow morning in your office, mm -hmm. uh, 11 a.m. East Coast, 8 a.m. on the West Coast. If you're shipping, if you're listening, pop on uh, Nay Lola's Thrift Talk and listen to the 10 fall fashion trends and uh, get, get a little knowledge. Gain a little knowledge. Yeah. It'll be fun and uh, I'll be tuning in because uh, I'll be shipping before we take off for Hawaii. So uh, as I said, no show next week because we will be out of town, but the following week, happy anniversary, happy birthday, number four for the thrifting board. It's a celebration of all of you who are on the thrifting board. And like I said, we're going to be sharing some good stories. We're going to be giving away some prizes. You'll see almost the entire lifeguard team. So that should be fun. And uh, we're going to have a great time. So I want to thank everyone for tuning in live. Uh, please give us a thumbs up. Subscribe down below when you watch Nay and Lola tomorrow. Subscribe to them and click the little bell. If you've never if you've never clicked the bell on a channel you subscribe to, the bell lets you know when that channel is going live. So even if you forget that it is 11 a.m. tomorrow because you've clicked the bell, it'll be like, yo, Jason, it's 11 o'clock. Time to watch uh, Nay and Lola talk about fall, fall fashion trends. And uh, that's it. Join the thrifting board. Follow Lola and Nay, follow me, and uh, great. Have a good day. Oh, and have a great Labor Day, everybody. Thank you, everybody. Bye. And hey, Nay, thanks for being my surprise guest co-host tonight. Yes, it was so much my, your misery co-host. Yeah, you're my, my misery <laughs> co-host. <laughs> it was fun. It was it was a lot of fun. I'm, I'm, it was great. to It's great to be, to be back on the show. Thank you. So cheers, everybody, and happy anniversary to my wife. Yes, happy anniversary, Stacey and Jason. Bye-bye.